So you need to kind of get the local people in the boat with you early on. Uh, prepare your plan. Um, by preparing a plan, you basically estimate what your load is, uh, what is the waste that's going to be on there. And um, you can see on this particular situation the black water from the water closet's already been removed. But this gives a, a, the same thing that I showed yesterday in my rainwater presentation uh, about what you can expect to use in a typical household. This is a detail that uh, an office building where you have uh, pretty much the uh, lavatories and hand sinks. Um, in Sri Lanka, they use this soil box. They kind of their leach field became their their planters outside their building. And uh, in a tropical situation, if you have broad uh, leaf plants, it will increase the evaporation and the transpiration by a factor of five. So. If you are in a, uh, an area that allows plants to be grown year-round, it will improve your leach field performance. This is a detail, I don't know if you can see it, of the, the building that we looked at there on my cover sheet there, um, where it comes up. Um, this differentiates uh, from what the common thinking in this country is, in that the gray water is everything except the black water and the kitchen sink. Here they take the kitchen sink and they run it through a, what they call a solid separator, which separates out any food waste, Obviously, you got to clean it out once in a while, uh, and it'll also allow the grease to separate. Then you will go out of that, you go into the uh, into the leach field itself. Uh, it's a much more simple situation. You have gradiated gravel and a simple distribution system. Um, this is a, uh, a little bit more of a detail, basically showing gradiated gravel. Um, the, the membrane on this, uh, well, before I get to the membrane, you basically put a mound around it, so you don't want surface water to run into your pit. You want basically on a high spot, so any moisture kind of leaches away from it. The difference between an evaporation field and a, 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 a evapotranspiration field is basically the membrane that goes underneath it. If in the case of the uh, the Panamanian the example that we're using, um, they didn't want the water to go into the ground because they, they were worried that it would go into the water, affect their reef, and then there goes their tourist business. So if your soil does not permit uh, evaporate or transpiration into the soil, you then have a, a non-permeable membrane, roofing membrane there, and then you bring in your soil, then it's totally evaporation. If you put the plants in, it improves the performance of your, uh, of your thing. If you have soil, then you can get the best of both worlds. You can get a little bit of leaching into your soil and still have evaporation uh, into, the, into the air. Uh, this is a, a typical landscaping plan that you might see uh, on how to take advantage, how to improve the performance of your, your leach field. The, um, uh, Indiana University basically replaced the, uh, their sewage treatment plant with the leach field and, and uh, basically solved the problem where they were polluting the local stream by the overflow from their, their sewage treatment plant. Town of LaGrange, Indiana, uh, the entire utility system goes through a leach field. The uh, powers that be basically said that you have to overflow into a customary uh, sewage treatment plant. For this state, after a five-year operation, they've never overflowed into uh, their, their backup sewage treatment plant. So the evapotranspiration uh, fields are, are um, uh, a viable option. Once you get all the permit uh, and, and your plan for review and approval, you install it. And the key part is uh, you got to arrange for inspection and, and approval. You basically have to maintain them uh, just to make sure that uh, the plants are living. If you're, you're relying on your plants, uh, it becomes almost a gardening, gardening situation. In the question, in the case of uh, LaGrange, for instance, if you're operating this through the wintertime, how does that affect the, uh, the uptake? You have to allow for that. Now, the good news is that in the winter, uh, humidity, uh, it, winter does get kind of dry. So if you've got a warmer effluent, then you're gonna, your, your evaporation doesn't totally uh, come to a halt. But that is a factor, and it goes back to that, uh, that seasonal evapotranspiration rate that, uh, that you need to account for. And that goes into the sizing calculation at the beginning of the... Exactly. And then you need to use it, monitor it, and maintain it. Uh, that's kind of pretty much what we're all about. Again, that's sort of a nice little summary picture there that kind of shows what, uh, what it's all about. And do you have any questions? Typically, from a, a fresh water source, uh, like what you're showing there, what would be the typical distance requirement that they would require for a leach field uh, based on proximity to the uh, banks of the uh, river that you see there? Um, 
they, that's probably an extreme example, although uh, it's all a matter of just allowing the, the gray water to, to go downhill. Uh, probably a quarter inch would be uh, probably be the limitation of the, the high, how high that wants to be versus how, mm -hmm. how far it's going to slope down. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a limitation. But you'll, if you go to Panama, uh, it's an interesting environment down there. Uh, they are far ahead of us as far as their off-grid applications. This place that we stayed at uh, had rainwater, composting toilets, but it did have high-speed internet. And there's a fellow down there that lives on that island that uh, has the high-speed internet and uses Skype to conduct his business. And he has conference calls and things like that. Although you can't get a cell phone signal there, you can he, he uses his laptop. Um, in Panama, you'll see a lot of uh, solar panels. Uh, again, the off-grade ap ap application, and the, the leach fields out back where they'll be watering their garden. And uh, again, the compost is used. They have brilliant flowers down there. Uh, they grow wild, but if they want to cultivate a garden, they'll use the compost from their, their composting toilets. What would it take? I mean, the, the current models of, of composting toilets have made some significant improvements. What would it take for composting toilets to move from what continues to be a niche product, primarily off-grid application, to uh, more mainstream application, to really be a interchangeable drop-in with a conventional flash toilet. I think uh, it, it, the question is, is, what does it take to get this mainstream? Uh, extreme water shortages environments uh, certainly would be a plus. Um, because the largest component of water typically uh, besides your clothes washer is your water closet. Mm -hmm. So th that would be a limitation. Uh, the, um, uh, and then just not having a local available utility, uh, as in Panama, as in back parts of Texas. Uh, there's a fellow in our, uh, one of our friends in Rainwater Catchment, he lives uh, uh, in Menard, Texas where the, uh, he's totally off the grid, uh, has his own rainwater system, um, and uh, uses composting toilets partially in his, in his residence, uh, just because uh, the percolation in the soil is not good. So that, that's the key thing right there. If you don't have water, you have poor per percolation, and composting toilets uh, are, are a big, big uh, option. You had one uh, illustration with a design that was a two-story installation where the collection was on a, a basement level or lower. Yes. Um, do those have the same sort of manual operating features and so on? You can, you can have, uh, the ones that are remote basically give the option of having a manual operation and uh, and automated. As I mentioned, it's either 12 volt for solar or 120, uh, depending if you're on the grid someplace. And if you're European, you could probably get the, uh, what do they have, 220 over there and, and a 50 cycle. So, uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, uh, this particular unit, and again, I'm a working class engineer. I don't sell these things for a living, fortunately. And, and uh, uh, they sell to Europe, so you can get the 50 cycle and, and everything. They're made in Canada, so they have a uh, more of an international uh, view on, on where they sell can these things. Can you pull up that slide again, the one that shows the, uh, the two-story uh, sure. installation? 